This video is a demonstration in how to sketch a tree. I have been using Mark Kistler's book, You Can Draw in 30 Days, to learn some of the basic ways to create three-dimensional space on a sketch. We drew many of these throughout the school year. And before we engage in this nature project, we need to try and draw trees. We have not drawn the contour tubes, but a contour line just indicates the curve of an object. Uh, this is representing a cylinder. Now we know a tree has lots of limbs that would look like cylinders. So the contour lines that give this direction are going to be useful in creating the illusion of three-dimensional space. Here in the picture of a person, they're using contour lines to show one leg is curving toward up and this back leg would be curving toward the floor. And we can skip that one. So let's get down to it. Lesson 21 in this book is all about drawing trees. That's a little more complex than the one we'll create right now. Steps are in front of me. Step one is that we will draw the trunk of the tree and it will taper out at the bottom. drawn in the middle of my paper. Good amount of room at the top for the canopy of leaves and at the bottom for some roots. Now we need to curve the bottom with a contour line. That's a curved line will give direction before we do the root system. However, we will erase that curved line so I'm just drawing light until I get it right. We're going to notice some directions going off into the distance in an angle. Similar to when we drew a cube, we're going to have an angle going up into the right corner and another going up into the left corner. Here, if you were thinking about a compass that told you directions, this would be northeast to the north and east, and this would be north and west southeast, southwest. So these directions are going off diagonally and that's going to tell us where our roots grow. So I'm going to draw four root systems that go off in these different directions. It's going to indicate space just by giving organic bumpy lines. Now this would be the bottom of a root system coming out of the tree here. And this part, the top of my root, will actually begin on the tree trunk. The same will be true of this side here. There'll be a bumpy top and a grassy side to my root system going in this direction. Now the things that are farther away from me are higher up on the page, so this back root system will be smaller than the one up front. I might have made that too large, but we'll just see. Now that I've got my roots in place, we need to add some branches at the top. I like to make a V and then let these smaller parts to my tree, these branches, these limbs, branch off maybe some contour lines that show the shape of that branch. This could bend a little bit. Tree branches are always very varied. They all are very different one from another. And now we can give ourselves a little guide about the leaves. The full branch of leaves would have something of a oval shape there. 
which we will fill in with texture in just a moment. And this branch also will have some leaves growing on it. I'd like this series of leaves to go behind this shape here. So I'm going to give a little overlap. And it's perfectly good to run your drawing off the paper. Now there might be more tree branches behind these two. So I'm going to add another limb to my tree right there. Give some texture to the edges. Just a jagged line will show texture and indicate the texture of the leaves all around. And I'll indicate this other ball here, but if we were going for a bigger tree, we would just keep adding layers there. I'm going to think about the trunk of the tree for a moment, focus on that. So I'm going to give a cast shadow from this canopy of leaves down onto this branch here. And just like when we drew cylinders, the shadow is going to be darker on one side and get gradually lighter. Doing a little value change there. Now it looks like this bunch of leaves is casting a shadow. And back here, this branch will be very dark because it seems to be in the middle of the tree where there are lots of leaves casting shadows on this branch. Maybe we should give a few contour lines. And again, under this canopy of leaves, we will give a dark shadow and add a little value to that, getting lighter toward the top. And I'm just putting shadow anywhere I think it belongs. Here's a little crease in the bark. Speaking of bark, here we are at the edge of our, uh, sorry, at the side of our tree now, along that side of this cylinder tree trunk. We could do a little bit of that tree or wood texture that we learned about. Repeating lines in the same direction. But the main thing is to give some value to our tree. Let's assume the light source would be up in the right corner, shining down. That would put the shadow on this side. The dark side of the tree would be over here. going to put a little shading here in between these two roots. If I wanted to erase that little guideline, I, would, I can right now. I don't mind it too much, though. I usually make my drawings darker rather than erase Pencil got away from me there. And I'm adding a little bit of texture at the bottom where the grass will be growing in my picture. There's grass at the bottom of this tree. I like to do the nook and cranny shadows. That shows a separation between this root and this root system behind it. So there's a nook and cranny shadow. I'm 
We can always give a few little... I'm gonna drop in a horizon line that goes behind the tree. Now I have to shade my canopy. The way I'll do that is just like we did with the spheres. I've already decided my light source is coming down from the upper right. So what I'll do is I will imagine a highlight here and add some shading in down here. And I've filled my page with my tree drawing to make a nice large sketch. That way I can give it lots of detail. If I made some little bitty sketch we wouldn't be able to add in all this detail. Because it's a tree with leaves, this texture that I'm shading in right now can really add to the overall effect of a rough, bushy tree. Now this is a new sphere, so I'm going to treat it sort of like a sphere where it'll be darkest here and lighter here. And it's overlapping. This piece is overlapping this group of leaves, so I'm going to show that this one is in front. As I scribble away and make dark shading, that blends into lighter shading. If you like to make little ovals, or if you like to do this hatching. Any way you shade is going to be fine for the trees. It'll give it your own personal style, but I am trying to indicate some leaf texture here. And you can be specific and give a few jagged leaf shapes inside of that tree. It's going to look a little cartoonish, but Still a pretty good looking tree. I was listening to a teacher talk about creating landscape pictures and he said that he likes to start with the shapes that are closest to the viewer and move further away. So this would be farther than this one. I put a lot of detail in these front shapes and I can put less detail behind it. All the texture needs to be close to us. And I think I'm looking pretty close to finish for this example of a tree. Give it some grass growing out at the bottom, maybe a, a stone or two, and there we have it.